Hey, thanks. This is part of this field flash update. We wanted to highlight a partner that we have that we just signed a global agreement with. It's Contino. Contino is engaging in the field and we are lucky enough to have Dave Collins on to go through the Contino value proposition and why this partnership makes a lot of sense for the field. So Dave, do you want to kick it off? Tell us a little bit about Contino. Absolutely, Alan. Thanks so much. Um, thanks everyone for kind of listening in today. We're super excited about the new partnership. Um, and want to give a little bit of context around what uh, kind of makes Contino a little bit unique and what are some of the use cases that um, GitLab uh, team members should look to engage us and where we should also look to engage uh, the GitLab team as well. So as far as the background on, on us as an organization, um, we focus in on highly regulated enterprises. We're a global DevOps and digital transformation consultancy. Um, so we're working with the largest banks, um, you know, any financial services, telcos, um, those type of large orgs that are trying to modernize the way that they deliver applications um, and modernize the ways of working uh, from a people process and technology standpoint. Um, so we really focus in on not only providing the uh, advisory side of things and making sure that we provide proper guidance to these enterprise clients, um, but then also rolling up our sleeves and being an engineering first organization so we can deliver um, and actually code side by side with our clients. Um, and that's probably one of the biggest differentiators of us as a company. And it's one of the most unique ones in the industry is that we, uh, we actually pair with our clients, engineers, security teams, infrastructure teams, whoever is working on the project um, to help upskill them and develop internal capabilities for these clients. So we're not coming in to kind of um, stake our claim and stay there for a number of years. We're coming in to accelerate these transformation efforts and help our clients build their own internal capabilities, which is a uh, certainly unique. And when you see it in action, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, so really excited about the, uh, the GitLab partnership. And um, we'll get to a little bit about why this made sense, I think, from both parties' ends as we kind of go through this little chat. So, um, you know, the partnership makes a lot of sense from my perspective as the guy that's looking after the global relationship because of the conversations you have with customers, really around digital transformation and getting involved in really those business initiatives that are driving the adoption of GitLab. Maybe in some cases, um, we're the platform that's enabling it, but maybe not as visible within the organization, right? We're not really tied per se to that app modernization project or a cloud native project or a DevOps assessment. And you're the voice and you're the consultancy that goes and has those conversations. And our value proposition, which is on the screen, really ties directly to it. So we create, and the field knows this, but our efficiencies that we create, the faster deployment of an artifact into production, and then the increased security is exactly aligned with what you want to position in your engagements. So that's why the partnership makes a lot of sense. We're very complementary to what you do. Absolutely. Um, I couldn't agree more. Uh, so with uh, a couple of the engagements, which we'll talk about in a bit, um, I think that where the GitLab team, from when I've been talking with different reps, where sometimes there's a struggle is, you know, getting into the organization is one thing, but then driving that adoption driving the behaviors within the development community to actually adopt the platform, not only just sign up for it, but use it properly um, and actually have, you know, understand test driven development, understand the proper branching strategies that are out there. Like that doesn't come from just, Hey, we got a new uh, system. Everyone's onboarding to it. It ha there has to be a shift to a more modern way of um, development as, as well as a more modern way of operating a new operating model. And that's some of the areas where we can we can fill in those gaps. So we were talking before this, Alan, for the group that's out there, understand we're not necessarily um, going to be the, hey, we're going to implement GitLab type team. Um, yes, certainly do we have the capabilities to do that. Of course, you guys have a services arm that can handle that, migrating repos and such. But what the real areas that we focus in on is we're talking with the business unit in, with similar parallels around what type of business value you're trying to drive. 
So if, are you looking to reduce your time to market? Are you looking to reduce your cycle time? Are you looking to get features out more quickly? And throughout the value stream, where are those pitfalls and how can we improve those? And a lot of the time it's disparate systems, it's disparate tooling, it's sprawl across the board. So what GitLab brings to the table and why we've recommended it to a bunch of clients um, is that it kind of, everything falls under one purview, one hat, like it's, it's all in one system. So you don't have to um, look across multiple systems and, and develop a lot of tech debt. Um, you can start fresh and really scale from there. So it's uh, something that we certainly recommend on our end as well. Yeah, I like the fact that you're exposing the feature sets to different groups within the organizations you're talking to, too. It exposes different levels of service, in essence. So we can have a conversation more effectively around why Premier or why Ultimate. You know, the security features, for instance, can drive a great conversation around why you need Ultimate, but we may not be having those conversations or the, the customer, quite honestly, might not turn to us as an expert in that area. They would turn to maybe you. And so, so by teaming up, we can get departmental exposure, we can scale the use. And as I just listened to one of our board members, um, Godfrey Sullivan, who's the, who is the ex-CEO of Splunk, that's how you get large enterprise deals. It's department, 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 and then all of a sudden, you've got a large interest across the entire organization for a multi-year deal, just like we closed a large financial services company this quarter. And that's how those deals come together. I know they're long sales cycles, but land, land, land. And that's my experience at VMware as well. And that's going to be experience here. So and a couple of success stories. I think you're a perfect person to talk about this. You're engaged with John May right now at Verizon, and it's very complimentary. We're doing our thing on, on the GitLab side. You're doing your thing, but it's really cooperative. And I'd love for you to go into some detail on how we're working together. Yeah, yeah, and then we'll touch on um, T-Mobile after that. So from the Verizon side of things, this is a perfect example and use case to what you were just talking about. Without the, the use cases of these specific projects, the teams, the applications, the modernization efforts that are ongoing within the organization, if, if the GitLab team isn't plugged into those and you're in shared services or whatever, you're a bit of an arm's length away from kind of the, the ground level of where these things are happening. And we're at that ground level a lot of the time. Um, whereas we don't have connection into the shared services and we don't have a connection into to the uh, teams that are deciding on tooling. And um, sometimes those are happening at high levels or low levels, same thing on our end. So I think it's a, it's a good compliment there. And Verizon's a, a great case here. So John um, has done some great work, John May uh, within Verizon to, you know, build the portfolio there, work with the shared services team, but at a certain point, you hit a, a, um, a bridge where you need to say, hey, how do we drive consistent adoption of our platform across all of these business units? And then there's multiple business units within the three arms of Verizon, you have media, consumer, and, um, and business. So we've, uh, we're working on a certain project there um, called Atlas, and that's developing a commercial AWS environment built from code, from a deployment standpoint. And GitLab is a, is a big part of that. Um, and that's what all the teams are working out of. And we're using some of the, I mean, we started off using, using the free version. And we're using, you know, um, uh, shared runners and um, some of the features. I think YAML as well. But really what it came down to is we were telling the client, hey, there's some more features we can use here. Um, and we re just recently got upgraded to Enterprise. Now we're getting... Um, We've gotten a couple of different projects where we're going to go into GovCloud work, federal, which I think is an interesting use case Very for interesting. all the compliance yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. that you guys have. So we're going into that work, and naturally, the teams that are using in this platform, they want to make it, they, they want to use the same exact, you know, GitLab features in the next one. And we might upgrade to Ultimate there because the use case is, hey, it needs FISMA high compliance. We might as well get the observability from um, that Ultimate brings and all that. We're going to do some work in. Um, the Australian region for federal government there. Again, natural fit for GitLab to come in. So like, it's just, it, it kind of rolls the tide and then you get these use cases around, oh, uh, GitLab's in Verizon doing federal work and you guys can use that as a crutch in other 
um, areas of the business. Um, but you're right, it just kind of snowballs uh, once you start to get into these different projects in these cases. I'm glad you mentioned the Australia tie-in because the relationship really is global. We've got engagements in the UK and I, in the US, Americas, and in APAC. So each sales team, I think some of the uniqueness of this is this is really tight within the sales ranks, which makes it great because you can't talk about a partnership very well unless you're engaged tactically or on accounts. And that's, I'm seeing that traction and it's really, really exciting. So let's skip over to T-Mobile maybe. Yeah, um, and so a shout out to John May on the last one, shout out to Nico Ochoa on this one, as well as Hayden, who's one of your regional leaders. Um, Hayden knew our co-founder, and this was actually before our partnership. Uh, yep, Ben Wooten, probably, he mentioned it on our call last week, yeah. Yeah, he was he was nice enough to, um, he reached out to, to Ben Wooten, who is our former founder and CTO, and said, hey, you know, what work have you guys done with, um, with GitLab and like the telco space? Luckily, we had been already been working with Verizon, and, and we had a couple other use cases that we were able to provide. And he gave us a you know an intro into to T-Mobile. Um, they were doing a consolidation across the board of moving from disparate systems, from Bitbucket, from Jenkins, to a number of others, all onto the GitLab SaaS platform. And we were working with their continuous delivery platform team, CDP team, who was essentially owning that. Um, and they thought it was a good time to not only, uh, you know, say, hey, everyone, we're shutting off these other systems at some point, but hey, while we're doing this, why don't we upskill our developer community and this is where we got kind of a dojo approach. So we were upskilling them on development best practices, um, as well as at the same time, Git, GitLab itself, some of the feature sets that they could use, and also understanding what their specific architecture was and how it would benefit from um, kind of this consolidation effort. And they're still ongoing to this day. We were doing on-site dojos and that kind of got slowed down by the, the COVID situation and lockdown. But yep. another great use case where you guys actually brought us in um, because you said, hey, this is kind of a larger effort than we're used to from a driving adoption standpoint. And it was, it was very successful. Well, I, I think it's always nice to have uh, an independent voice evaluating best practices using tools that they really love and then making those recommendations independent of a vendor's specific recommendation. So really appreciate your help there and we should be doing more of that. So if you're listening to this in the field and you have a DevOps assessment that needs to go on, uh, it's better to bring in a Contino that can kind of go through it with an independent eye, evaluate the tool chain, simplify the environment, make a recommendation that's best practices and GitLab will benefit from it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're an agnostic organization and always have been. So we're not looking to resell licenses or anything along those lines. We're looking to come in and do um, what's in the best interest of a client. And we've just found that kind of GitLab is best of breed when it comes to the whole entire SDLC, CICD process, um, just as a platform itself. Um, and it's kind of leading and has been. So it's a natural fit for us to say, we can take and consolidate everything and make our lives easier when we actually implement, a, you know, say we're building out a cloud platform or we're building out a data and analytics, you know, data lake or warehousing strategy. If we can consolidate that on that end with, a, you know, a tooling and a platform that we love and the client gets a lot of benefit from it, it it's, a, it's a natural fit. And I love the, the approach here and the engagement it gives a sense to the field teams on what it is you actually actually do. I think sometimes they, as we talked about earlier, it's, it's not about, you know, migrating a repo or doing a migration. It's really about the broader value to the organization. So you want to yeah. go into some detail here and we can wrap up after this? Absolutely. So I think the best way to articulate this is that the reason, um, and for those who don't know, uh, Continuum was acquired in late 2019 by Cognizant. Um, and Cognizant is a global systems integrator, and they purchased Contino for a specific reason, and that specific reason was to act as kind of the tip of the spear in these transformation efforts. And what that means is we're going to come in and unstick a lot of these activities that just haven't gone anywhere in large enterprises for a number of years and help them drive the meaningful behaviors and patterns that are going to help modernize the way that they operate um, by starting small, specific use cases, measuring them, and then scaling. 
um, the boil the ocean approach doesn't work. And that applies here too. And when you guys are trying to drive adoption um, across the organizations you're working within, sometimes you can get very siloed in a certain region or quite frankly, they, you know, you're looking at, Hey, I just need to, you know, bump up the licenses that I need to, a lot of it's changing the culture and changing the mindset within the client. Um, and that comes through kind of unsticking a lot of these uh, transformation efforts that they have going on in the back end. So adoption acceleration is probably the biggest thing that we can provide. Certainly recommend recommendations from our team to your team and vice versa. Um, and we've done that on both ends, which is great. Um, and then uh, account capital collaboration, we're gonna be doing a lot of that just at the field rep level, having honest conversations with each other and saying, hey, I'm in here, I'm willing to make an, an intro for you and you're willing to make an intro for me. And then last piece is the assessments that you mentioned, Alan. We can certainly come in and um, do a kind of DevOps maturity assessment um, and or cloud readiness assessment, You know, look at their application set that they're looking to migrate. All of those type of things are, are in our purview and we can certainly engage with us. Yeah, so you know, we talked about our value drivers. I mentioned them earlier, but you know, getting applications into production faster, so agile development, uh, secure, uh, securing the environment, and then just being more efficient. And those tie perfectly, again, I'll summarize with that, but then um, we'll close with, what are the next steps? What are the action items? How do we take this to the next level? It really is about a field engagements. And so just to share with the team, we have a spreadsheet out with Hayden and Mark Ruggie's team, and we'll do this in APAC and in the UK and I as well, where we're gathering account names where we want, need some help to scale, to expose more of the features to more groups, to uh, take our value drivers and tie them to true business initiatives that are critical to the company. and. Uh, have those conversations with the executives that matter and kind of shine the light on where GitLab can help that company do the job that they need to do, you know, with Contino's expertise at our side. So we're assembling the names in each of the regions where we can use some help. And we should use that to engage very tactically, rep to rep in the field after that list has been summarized and surfaced out to, you know, individual teams. So that's kind of the next step. And there's a good summary here for next, uh, action items that we can take. Anything more, Dave, that you want to throw in there and we can maybe wrap up? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think we touched on most of it, Alan. Uh, really, hey, we're, we're a services-based company that's trying to do by, right by the client. You guys are a product-based company that's trying to do right by the client. You know, as we start to interact with each other, I think we'll find the right groove for what uh, engagements make the most sense, where to bring us in, where we bring you guys in, at what levels with the right people. So let's uh, give each other the benefit of the doubt and try and collaborate as um, effectively as possible. But we don't know that and we won't run into those type of situations until we start getting out there and actually trying to do some of this account mapping and like legitimately trying to intro each other into accounts. I know on our end, we're super excited about it and uh, we've already started to uh, position and it works. It does work, just give it a, uh, give it a try and um, get with some of our folks and we'll do the same and I think- And if you, really if you have doubts, just talk to John or Nico. And then if you're listening to this webinar, uh, my name is Alan Geary. I look after the global system integrators here at GitLab. My email is ageary at gitlab.com. If you wanna get engaged with any of the Contino field members, I can make that connection happen quickly. So don't wait for the list. If you want to get engaged immediately, see the benefits that we saw at Verizon and T-Mobile and a bunch of others we didn't have time to talk about, send me an email. Thanks, Dave and Kurt, for organizing this. Great Absolutely. Webinar. Thanks, Alan. This is awesome.